Hey, at the beginning I'm going to shortly discuss what functionalities we have in Selenium IDE. When we turn on Selenium, then the pop-up window will be displayed. We choose Create a new project. We can name project as we want. I will name my project Test. If we want to change the name of the project, then here at the top left corner we can click on name and change it. On the other side we have three icons. First icon is create new project. Second is open existing project. Third is save. Below we have a record icon. When we click it, then we will be asked for the website address on which we want to record our test script. As you see, the state of the icon change when we record. Flashing square always means that the Selenium is recording our steps in the browser. Better approach is to type the URL address in that place before clicking the record icon. I will show you the difference. This approach is a lot better, because the address is remembered and we don't need to type every time the same address. The next important thing is an editor. All recorded steps will be displayed here. You can modify them or add new one. In a command field, we type a specific command for our Selenium. This field has a hint option, which makes it easier to find appropriate commands. The next field is target. So for what element on the page the command should be executed? Later in the course, you will learn different techniques for localizing elements on the web page. This is universal knowledge, because you will need that in future when you will be using more advanced tools like Selenium WebDriver. Next field is value. Some commands take values. For example, when we log in, then we need to pass a password. Let me show you this example now. In the bar at the top, I will enter the page where I want to test the functionality. Now I will enter the command, which is responsible for entering values in fields on the website. To localize elements we have two options, either with Selenium or with the help of developer tools. For now let's use the first option. Here we have a select target in page button. When we click it and go to the website, then as you can see, when I hover over the element, then it is highlighted. Let's choose a password field. Next to it, we have a find target on page button. When we click it, then chosen element will be highlighted on the web page. The last step is type password in value field. Now we have a ready script that can be run. As you can see, to localized element has been passed a value. Of course, this is not full-fledged script. 
This is just an example. Later in the course you will be creating more advanced tests. The last item to be discussed here in the editor is the description field. We can name our specific step in a more understable way. In that way, we can make it easier to understand what's going on in our script. When we hover over on a step, then we can see his details. Here we have the possibility to set the speed of our test execution. When we press this icon, our test will run with the difference that it will stop at each command. To go to the next command, you need to press the button again. This is a very useful option if you want to slowly walk through the script and see why something is not working. First command run. Page has been opened, but script stops. Password field is empty. When we click this button again, then the next step to enter password will be executed. This option allows us to simply run the current selected script. Run all tests. This option will run all our tests. On the left side we have a window in which we will see all our tests. We can add here new ones, delete them, or change the name of existing ones. Now let's add one test. Rename the previous one. When we will have more tests, here in the search box we can filter our tests. Our tests we can group into test suits. We need only to change here at the top from tests to test suit. Let's add new test suit. and change name of the previous. How you group your tests is up to you, but it's worth grouping them thematically. Now we'll add tests to our test suits. For a while I want to go back to the run all test button. In previous mode, where we have all our tests in the list, that button will run them all. Now in the test suit mode, when we choose a test from one of them and we press the run all test button, then executed will be only those tests from the selected test suit. This is a cool option, because we don't want to always run all tests. At the bottom we have a log window. Here will be displayed all important information about executed tests, if tests pass or fail and what was the error. On the right side we have clear button to clear our log. In that place we can read information about particular commands. Here we have a short description of this open command. 
This is a nice feature, because if you don't know what a particular comment does, you can get to know it from here. And that's it for the basic options. In the next lesson, we will record our first script. See you soon!